Hello everyone to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. We have the opportunity to speak to Ziad Doriri, director of the new movie, The Attack. The Attack is a powerful film about an Arab Israeli doctor who tries to find out why his wife committed a terrorist attack in Israel. Let's take a closer look. Whenever you uh, create a film, it's, uh, it's exciting because there's a lot that um, storytellers want to bring to the forefront so they connect with the audience. And this film is a difficult film. It, uh, it, it tackles um, you know, the hours of the conflict, um, but also it weaves together a story about what happens afterwards. Meaning that when you see um, an, an, an attack in Israel, um, you see like images of people went to hospital, you see rocket, whatever, whatever that situation is, you see that happening. But you don't really see the, the human side to the after effects in, in some cases. How did you prepare your actors for this difficult um, movie? Look, uh, usually working with actors is a much simpler level. It, there is no so much brain involved or like deep analysis. Also, it depends on each the actress. For example, the uh, Ramon Ansalim, who is an Israeli actress, her technique is to get into the characters and understand their backgrounds and their motives and everything. She's much more of an analytical person. Ali Suleiman, who is an Israeli Arab actor, he is just one instinctual. Whenever I start to explain to him, he didn't get it. He said, just tell me what you want. Um, we did not discuss in depth, not even a single time, the message of the film. Mm -hmm. Because if you start doing that, you're going to clutter the, the acting, in my opinion. The material was there in the script. They asked themselves, is that a good material? Can I relate to those characters? Or I can't. This is why they selected this thing. But we never sit down and discuss the philosophy of it, bizarrely. Usually you let the message come mm -hmm. after the spectator work out of a movie. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen while you're casting, while you're shooting, while you're writing. You really don't take it as far as that. You just think about how can I make a very compelling story. Mm -hmm. Was there uh, a time during the filming that you're like, wow, that was, that was an incredible moment? Like that, like sometimes things surprise or don't go exactly the way you planned when you're doing a shoot. Um, was there a moment during your, the filming that you're like, I can't believe we actually got that. For example, when he is in jail and he's been interrogated by the great actors, Uri Gavriel, I knew I had great material. I just know that the way we rehearsed it came out to be as good. I know that some of the romantic scenes between Amin and his wife when they're laying in bed and talking about their past. And we wanted to show that this is a liberal couple. These are not fundamentalist, Islamist, or, 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 you know, these are people who are very modern and very liberal in their views. <coughs> After we finished filming it, I walked out of the set thinking, says, ah, oh, I think we, we, we got this one. It looked mm -hmm. good on camera, right. it looked good on the monitor. So, but it was not like this all the time. Right. And so you filmed in Israel and in the West Bank? Yes. Um, in the city of Nablus. Nablus. And how did people react to that when you were filming the movie while you were shooting? Look, to tell you the truth, it was a very smooth shooting. We thought that, uh, you know, the, t uh, the city of Tel Aviv gave us all the permit. Actually, they went out on a limb to help us out. Mm -hmm. The hospital, the Echilov hospitals, they gave us things that normally they wouldn't give. Mm -hmm. They gave us the emergency room to film it, the real mm -hmm. emergency room. We shot a bridge in front of the Ma'arif building. Mm -hmm. It's a very small bridge, but very main artery mm -hmm. in the city. Nobody ever shuts down that, that thing, but mm -hmm. the city agreed to give it to us. Mm -hmm. When we went to Nablus, we spoke with the Palestinian Authority and that they were keen on giving a good impression that the city of Nablus is stable after what has been going on many years mm -hmm. ago. So they said, whatever you want, we will guarantee you your safety and that everything will work. And if any Israeli want to come, they are welcome. We will assure you that they're going to be safe. Mm. So the actual operation of the film mm. between Tel Aviv and Nablus was very, very, very fine. Did uh, as you were as you were filming it, um, did you have a sense of how the audience would react to the movie? Look, there are a couple of scenes where I didn't censor myself in the mm. writing. Just I want this to be very clear. But a couple of scenes, 
you ask yourself during the writing, I wonder how an Israeli would react to that scene, I wonder how an Arab would react to that mm -hmm. scene, I wonder how an American would react to that scene. For example, the scene where Amin walks and there is the war written ground zero. Mm -hmm. We wrote it and we wondered, would the American public, especially from New York, how would they react when they see that mm -hmm. graffiti sprayed on the wall? Mm -hmm. Would they think that is it offensive by making, sort of making the parallel between what happened in 9-11 and what happened in Geneva? The other scenes is the new scene. When, uh, I mean, I went ahead and did it with absolutely no hesitancy, mm -hmm. but I was wondering how some of those culture, would, the, the, how the Arab would consider having a Palestinian doctor and his wife, and his Israeli, both they are actually Israeli Arab, smoking pot, you know that, they're mm -hmm. passing a joy back and forth, <laughs> and they are naked. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't censor myself to do it, but I was wondering, are they going to react how toward it? And in fact, there was some positive reaction from some of the Arab audience mm. and some negative reaction from some of the Arab audience about this. It's a film that do carry those touchy scenes by nature. You know how it is. Every time you tackle the Middle East, we're, we're, we're set for yeah, yeah, pros no. and cons. Right, sure, sure. And this is the, the, this is the Joel and I, the co screenwriter, was a, you know, it was a fine line we had to walk through just to make sure, not w that we're neutral, not that we didn't take side. We do take side. We take side of life. Mm -hmm. We take side of humanity in those characters. We took a position, we were not neutral. I was not trying to be very, very objective. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not interesting to be very objective. What we want to show is, no matter what you think, there is an Israeli perspective and there is a Palestinian perspective. Sometimes they collide. Sometimes they don't match, sometimes they're, they're diametrically opposed, but everybody has a perspective, no matter what you think of it. And this is, I think, part of the complexity that we try to, to keep, because a lot of Arabs don't believe that Jews have perspective, and a lot of Jews don't believe that Arabs have perspective. It was not interesting dramatically mm -hmm. to do it like this, seriously. It was not, I would have repeated the same slogan and the same discourse I grew up with all my life. Mm -hmm. I was not interested to do that. I wanted to see that whatever the Israeli tell Amin is very valid and it's very justified and they have the right to say and whatever Amin or the Palestinians say, they also have their point of view. And this is where the complexity of the story. One of the, uh, the, op one of the opening scenes, um, Amin gets the award uh, for being uh, you know, an incredible doctor. Um, you know, the messaging there is clear, like he, he's an Arab Israeli um, and be, you know, he, you know, he's very proud of his um, accomplishment. accomplishment and being the first Arab uh, to Absolutely. receive this award. Right. Um, and then you see like him going through his own process and trying to discover what happened with the situation of his wife being uh, you know, a terrorist and, and, and then sort of understanding what that means for himself as, as an Arab Israeli and then as, as an Arab. And you know, at the end, when he he like, you just see him breaking in a way. You see like that, you know, he, breaking, but then coming back together. It's where he's like, this is the way things are. It's like, is this isn't this the way things are sometimes? It, it's is just, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's just. It, I think it's like, um, it, it, it was such like a, a human um, emotion that is. I think it's very hard sometimes to capture in film, and I think he did that really well. And saying like he tried, he really he wanted to discover. And then at a certain point, you know, he had friends who were Israeli and Jewish, and um, and then he just got to a certain point where he's like, like you know, like there's only so much I can do as a person. And then growing from that from that point, and then you know, when the bus when, when the bus like goes by, I was just like, what was that? You know, it was, it was, it's like it leads yeah. the the audience to like what's yeah. next. Exactly. It's, yeah. an, it's an open ending. Yeah. We know that his idealism, his uh, integration, and his success is actually what's going to get to him at the end. Because he wanted to rise above that conflict. He wanted to say, I'm a human being who saved lives. I'm someone who took the Hippocratic Oath, meaning I get sworn that when I save life, no matter what their blood is, what their race, what their religion, this is what he does for living. He upholds the very high moral authority. What his wife did contradicts totally what he believes in. It's not like that she committed suicide. It's not like she went and threw herself on a military checkpoint. She killed innocents. 
which is the worst kind of act you could do. You understand? Mm. Because if, if you could understand, in a war, sometimes you go and you attack military personnel, and you say, well, military personnel, whatever they are, it's still wartime. But when you attack innocent, you, craw you cross uh -huh. a barrier. Right. He has to deal with that. She did exactly the opposite of what he grew up all his life doing. Hmm. He was so in love with that woman. He thought he knew that woman. Because you know, Siham in the film, played by Raymond, she's not somebody who comes from a refugee camp, and she's hmm. not come from she's not Muslim, she's not poor. She's all but that. Which becomes difficult to understand. In the book, by the way, she was Muslim. And she gets buried in a Muslim cemetery. We changed it. We made it Christian. It was just, I thought that was better. Mm -hmm. Because it's less predictable mm -hmm. to do it. Because nobody here of there are Christians in the mm -hmm. Middle East. Most of them think that everything right. that happens right. is related right. to Muslim, 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 Muslim. Right. 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 But then we wanted to show, oh, there are Christians in the Middle East that, that just, you know. One of the questions I had was, did, did you make a conscious decision not to show her actually doing a suicide attack? Good question. If it was part of the, our production plan to go find a place, demolish it, mm -hmm. and show the at least either show her blowing herself up or show the aftermath of the bombing, but mm -hmm. in the right. restaurant. So I went on uh, Dizengoff, I think, and we find a couple of places. One in, on the beach in Tel Aviv, one uh, close to that, uh, you know, Schenken Street. <coughs> and I wanted to shoot it, and then I thought. If I shoot it, I'll be pointing the finger too much at it. Mm -hmm. Let me just keep it in the background, and the only time we make a revelation, we make a, a connection to that restaurant is through the TV. Mm -hmm. you remember that mm -hmm. in the hospital, mm -hmm. it's a TV report, and mm -hmm. I zoom in on the, on, the, on the monitor, and we see the, the, the TV is reporting on the suicide attempt mm -hmm. in the restaurant. I thought it was more effective, for very dramatic reason. I thought if I actually went and showed the actual restaurant, the, the attack took place, I would be pointing the fingers too much to her, to his mm -hmm. wife. I wanted the, the bomb to be almost like a daily routine. It happens every day. Mm -hmm. And it's reported on TV, on TV. I wanted to make it almost as if it's a passing by, as if for the protagonist not to suspect anything. He just see it on TV, it happens all the time. That's why we decided not to shoot in the restaurant, even though it was on scheduling. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to shoot it. And it saved us some money too. There is a, you know, we touched a little bit about how the re mixed reactions uh, in the American and Arab world. Um, what are you hoping this film will, will teach? First of all, I'm hoping that the Arab would reverse their decision and let the film be released. The film is going to be released in Israel July 5th. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why the Arabs are taking that decision to ban the whole Arab country to ban the film. The, the, the reason they did it and they, they, they didn't uh, try to hide, they say because I, me being a Lebanese citizen, I filmed with Israeli Jewish actors and I set foot in Israel. This is a bogus, this is a bogus reason to boycott a film. There is no reason for anybody to boycott a film. What I was hoping is that the Lebanese, especially because I'm from Lebanon, and the Arab country would have the chance to see that film. Because it's a quality film, I think. I mean, I, I, think, I, 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 I think I can say it in all modesty, I nailed it this time. You don't nail your film all the time. Sometimes you screw up certain yeah. things, you know. I felt like I, I was so rigorous right. that I would have been so proud to show my film in front of the right. Lebanese audience, sit with them, and discuss the film. Right. If after that they want to attack the film, they want to hate it and throw eggs, fine, but let them take that decision. I don't want some government Arab authority to come and tell me, just because you work with Israeli Jews, we're going to boycott that film. This is unacceptable to me, totally unacceptable. This is not how I grew up. Beirut was not like this back in the 70s. Beirut was a lot more liberal. It's just now the way things are, this incredible hatred and taboos that are blind uh, upset me very much. I try to work a lot to try to reverse the Lebanese government's decision. It's, I did not succeed. I did not succeed. It's very sad. It really is. Every so often, I wake up in the middle of the night, I wake up my wife and I say, you know what? What can we do? How can I reverse? I'm not going to let them have it. I'm not going to let them have it. Because 
it's not the right decision if you want to improve your society. You gotta be able to allow artists to express themselves. We artists, filmmakers, we cross that boundary. We're supposed to examine the other side. Whether you like the other side or you don't like, that's something different. But we are, the Israeli do it all the time. The Israeli make so many films that criticize their own government, that are critical of their own establishment. Nobody banned them, you know? Yeah. It's, it is, they, they, the Arabs are not doing themselves a favor by oppressing and repressing free thoughts. Free thinking is part of your advancement. You either be in history or outside of history. The Arab League decided to be outside of history. With all the crimes going on in Syria, the chemical weapons and the rape and the mass murder, the Arab League couldn't agree on what to say about Syria, yet they all unified and agreed to ban the movie. Is this what you are doing sitting in Cairo? You can get your shit together, but now you actually, for the first time in history, you, all of you unanimously agree to ban a movie? This is ridiculous. I'm upset. I, every time I say, take it easy, it's okay, but I get upset again. You understand why? Yeah, for sure. The Attack is a difficult film and brings up a lot of questions about the Arab Israeli conflict. What this story brings to light is how individuals deal with the terrorist attack and brings us a little closer to the impact of families of both sides of this uh, difficult situation. This is Aaron Herman. Thanks for watching.